Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks by the New Art School. Our guest today is Oscar Diaz. Welcome, Oscar. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Fantastic to have you here. So tell us about you. Uh, well, I am an uh, industrial uh, designer and um, cu currently run a small practice uh, here in London and also teach uh, uh, different universities um, Yeah, as a visiting lecturer. Lecture, yeah. Fantastic. So uh, tell us tell us more. How, how, when did you start? Uh, so so my, my, uh, yeah, my background, it was more into art. I, I just um, switched on my last uh, year, actually, in university. I was doing um, an exchange in France, and I decided to, to switch to design. So I have a, a kind of a twisted, um, um, yes, trajectory into design. But um, yeah, definitely something that I always uh, like it. I've always been interested uh, in um, taking things apart and understanding how things work. And I think out of that uh, curiosity, I got I got into design and, and I start uh, first. I, I work for, for, for a few years in, in Paris in a studio uh, with Metallic Crasset. And then uh, because I had done just one year of industrial design in this kind of change from subject on my last year, at university, I went back and I did an MA uh, at the Royal College of Art. Um, after that, I was uh, lucky to be invited to a, a, a small project uh, in, in Gifu in Japan uh, with um, Innovation RCA, that, uh, this is kind of a, an office that uh, connects uh, designers and industry. And so I went to Japan for about six months and I was working there with a, with a furniture company. Um, then I came back to the, to the UK. I started working uh, on, on my own uh, with clients. I, I work a lot on, um, done quite a lot of toys, uh, especially um, educational toys. I've done uh, a number of uh, toys for um, I, uh, for Muji, for, in, 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 for, for the Christmas uh, season. And now I recently um, started working with this company, doing STEM toys, uh, trying to um, have toys that uh, children can make themselves and, can, and there is some learning into it, some, some of the skills needed for the future, either engineering, maths, uh, and all those skills that we talk so much about at the moment. Fantastic. So just to go back to the beginning, wh where did you switch from? I switched from art. I was doing uh, more like studied, painting and sculpture, painting. sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I missed <laughs> and and, and, this... and I switched for, from an artist's background, basically, yeah. uh, to a designer. Uh, it, it, it was it was sort of a, a chance of things happening. Uh, when I when I went from I was studying in Salamanca, I moved to uh, Bordeaux in the southwest of France, and there I, I happened to got into this kind of a small uh, group of students, which was uh, called uh, non non guaranteed limits, and it was kind of a mix. Uh, basically, there were uh, designers, industrial designers, and artists, kind of sharing the same brief. And I got interested on, on that on that side, you know. Um, I I was at the moment already feeling a bit disappointed. I thought that the the, the art world was very uh, cryptic, difficult for everyone else to get into. You need to uh, nowadays uh, have a kind of a wide knowledge of art to to properly understand it. And what I like about design is that you don't need to understand it. I mean, if it works, you shouldn't be trying to understand design it should be just working and and that that kind of proximity to the subject just appeals to me and and that's what i went in fantastic excellent so then uh tell us about what what your projects you're working on the, your latest project so i i yeah, I, I've been working a lot, as I said, on, on STEM uh, projects, children subjects, uh, and, and I started working as, as creative director for this company in France a few years ago, where we tried to um, look at the future. There is this uh, uh, kind of famous um, talk where, where uh, 
Bill Gates say it's going to be, I think it's about 60% of the jobs uh, in 10 years don't exist now. So how do we prepare people from for that? If, if a huge amount of when, when AI comes in, a huge amount of jobs that we know now that are going to be automatized, uh, what are the skills that I cannot, can, can you teach so people can survive this uh, changing environment? I think we, we all, we all um, uh, have seen the speed of change going faster and faster. I remember in my, my previous generation, you used to have used, um, for music, for example, you just have a standard record. Uh, on my lifetime, you know, my grandpa's life. On my lifetime, you already went uh, cassettes, you went to MP3, you went to uh, CD, uh, and now we are in some into, into uh, more software, Spotify list, and so on. So you could see how the, the accelerating rate of technology is bringing change much faster. So uh, the question is, how did you uh, prepare people for that? And, 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 and that's difficult because you need to look at what, what are uh, transferable skills, what are adaptable skills that can, uh, basically you are, you are preparing people for the unknown and you're just trying to say, okay, creativity will be most difficult to replace by, ro by, by technology, robots, AI, um, problem solving skills, you kind of uh, try to look at those skills that that you know for sure uh, they will be valuable in, in 10 years 15 years with that idea and and some other ideas some some old ideas from uh, also benjamin franklin that talks about education and he uh, for example has something like uh, i'm gonna misquote him but it's something like um um tell me something and 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 I understand, but make me do it, and and I learn. Uh, so this idea of learning through making is very very important as well for this company. So we thought about how do you instead of giving something that is finished and the children can only uh, 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 do as we said, what if we uh, propose sort of a open open ended play uh, where children can kind of customize, and there is some learning into it. So it becomes a bit more experienced. It's not the typical toys. It's kind of more difficult to sell in a, in sort of business terms, but it becomes uh, more interesting uh, for me as, as 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 an object as a mission. Yep. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. So how did you get into teaching? Uh, into teaching, it was also something, uh, you know, I was, I don't know, I was interested on all schools and teaching methods, maybe because I've been through a few teaching schools myself, you know, in Salamanca, and then in Bordeaux, and then in, in the UK. So three different countries. And I was exposed to very, very different ways of teaching. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. So obviously, I went to look into uh, curriculums back uh, at the time. I was interested in the Bauhaus, obviously, and, and what became the school of Ulm in Germany mm. and, and, and how those curriculums uh, compare. And, and so when I graduated from the RCA, I did, I did a small um, workshop for training for, for teachers mm. at the London College of Communication. And then, and then I, I just started my practice, and in parallel, I was invited to do workshops in different places. Uh, and, and every time it was about a week, maybe 10 days, mm. and we select a subject. And, and I really liked the energy of those, of those uh, sort of events. There was a huge amount of exchange. A lot of things could happen uh, in those 10 days, especially in the last ones. Um, and it was it was great uh, teaching. And so at some point in 2013, I was offered a position to, to teach back at the RCA. And I and that's when I started teaching kind of regularly um, once once a week. And that's, until now, I, that's what I've been doing. Um, yeah. No, go on. That's good. No, that, that's how I got into it. Kind of, kind of naturally, first on workshops, and now more regularly into, uh, yeah, once a day, once a week, I do yeah. uh, mainly tutorials uh, with the students, and, and I really like this change uh, I have. Yeah. 
Fantastic. So how do you bring the energy from your professional life into, into teaching? Yeah, that's the, that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's great for me because there's a switch there when, when for four days a week I have my own problems and my own yeah. things to deal with. And then suddenly I go and I have to, to, to uh, think for someone else what will be the best choice because a lot of those times and tutorials, uh, every student has their uh, specific project and I have to um, think what what uh, not what I will do, but what I will do in that in his situation, or what will be the the best path to take. So it's a lot of uh, mentoring and discussing, uh, trying to poke holes into their thinking and say, okay, why you did that or why you didn't do that, and then obviously. Um, and then obviously uh, technical expertise, uh, maybe some uh, materials or things that I came across through my professional practice that I can recommend or just say, why, why you don't try this or that, yeah. So it's, it's just a very good uh, balance. Uh, at the same time, students are always going into new technologies, new things, and then I also learn, learn things. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So how can we help uh, students and graduates reach employability in this ever-changing uh, environment? Yeah, obviously nowadays um, design has become uh, much more um, known and accepted as a profession originally, especially if you look at Italian design, they were all architects, trained architects that were doing design. Uh, and and in, in myself in Spain, I think it didn't exist. The degree for in, uh, pro designer in particular didn't exist until very, very recently. I think it's 2006 or something like that, which is incredible. <clears throat> there was this idea of either you are a, an engineer and you go full on on that, or you are an artist. And, and the kind of middle uh, ground didn't exist until recently. <clears throat> Nowadays has, has exploded, and I think what uh, we've seen is that um, things are much more fragmented and, and mixed together. And I think designers need to be more entrepreneurial. I think they need to be better at communication as well, uh, because of the because of media media landscape and, and how how things um, uh, happen now. You know, we have a ton of uh, images flowing, and and there is a lot of also uh, there's a lack of attention on, on people so you need to play differently i mean uh, things that cds th cvs are are nearly out of uh, date or today you know and things like that need to be adapted and and i see this also in the design education we teach for example things like technical drawing that are are good to do and and, and i remember <clears throat> not in university but in in a school using parallax and this kind of tools still, you know, and now nowadays you can see that that was the lack of having a 3D system. But uh, when I work with companies, most of the time uh, now I sell uh, 3D files and, and technical drawings are just to double check most of the time. So you see that things are, the complexity has gone up, but because we have tools that are much faster and complex, also, uh, the the barrier to access to that complexity is being lowered. Mm. Um, so to prepare uh, those those two skills, I think are very very important. That we are not always very good at communicating because we are into three D. So um, communication is going to be very important and also be more uh, entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, fantastic. So. How can we do design education differently? What would you change, if, if anything, uh, if you could, if you had a magic wand, if you could do whatever? Yeah, you like? yeah. I think the best, the best thing, and I like, and uh, these uh, schools that are trying, uh, this is done more into business, this kind of uh, practice. But I like when the course is very, very close to um, to reality. I think. Uh, the, the the problem with some universities is that you stay in this kind of bubble where there is a system and, and students might look for a degree which is or a grade which is fine you know being a student as well but it's not the end purpose you know the 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 the, the grade or the degree is a consequence of learning not an objective 
But if you, you understand that as, a, as an objective, then you're missing the point. You're just looking through the hole and you're just uh, missing what is around, you know. Um, and so things that I will uh, like is just be closer to the real world. What is the education? That's why I like in university when we do uh, what we call life projects with companies. And companies come in and we have people with very uh, specific expertise. Uh, and we've done that uh, with Bosch and other companies. And you can see how much transfer of knowledge there is and, and, and learning from the students. I think that that's key. And, and that should be on all levels. I think I think we should be um, trying to uh, act in the university as close as we can to uh, the real world. And, and that need to be updated every few years. Another thing I like in the in the in the RCA, this is on the system that we had we were exposed to. It was this idea of um, vertical uh, units, meaning that you were two years there, but there was not a different curriculum from first year and second year. Mm -hmm. You you said you felt that someone was second year because he had more experience like being in the army or making more hour, hours of flying or something like that. But there was not a different curriculum. It's what I call kind of a, a buffet kind of learning, like eat, eat as much as you can. Why, why should I limit? This is your first year learning, you, you get there and don't learn this because we're going to teach this in the second year or in the third year. There was also a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning there which is very, very important for teaching. So I think that is structure, I mean, I don't, I, I'm, I'm aware that you cannot do that everywhere or with big chunks of students. This work because there was a small group of students, but I think that idea was very interesting. The idea of uh, first and second year is, is just a number. I mean, you are mixed together. You have the same brief, you reply the same thing. You just have two years there. And I like that. So those those kind of uh, things that I've seen, things that uh, that uh, examples that I've seen that for me work really well because it kind of pushes you up. There is no uh, curriculum limitations. Mm. Um, yeah, and then uh, one of the places, uh, obviously, I see uh, here and there a few things that are very interesting, but uh, but all of them uh, come back to the to the same basis, like how you, can you get as close as industry and the real world as possible. Fantastic, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. So how can our viewers and listeners find you? Yeah, so, well, I'm on Instagram. I have an Instagram uh, account, uh, Oscar Diaz Studio. Um, you could find me also in Twitter, it's the same handle. Um, I have my website also, uh, which is oscar-diaz.net. Excellent, excellent. And what advice would you like to leave us with? Uh, about education? About <laughs> anything, anything you want, anything, anything you want. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I just, um, I say uh, the, the best, um, the best students I got always are uh, very curious. So uh, one thing I will advise anyone getting in this profession or wanted to get in this profession is how do you um, maximize that? How do you uh, work on that? Uh, you know, the design process doesn't start on a sketching page, start before. What do you put in uh, before you can put out? So be aware of that, what do you, what do you feed yourself out of? Mm. And, and and try to to select very well that yeah fantastic fantastic well thank you so much you really enjoyed our conversation thank you and thanks we'll to you. again soon all right thank you all the best, all the best. bye thank you